Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay here. Welcome back to the channel. I know a lot of you guys have questions about this amplifier since I've been practically featuring it in every speaker review. Obviously, it is because I like them quite a bit and it has become somewhat my reference in the past month. And yes, it is that good. I often saw reviews comparing Kinky Studio stuff to $15,000 or $20,000 amplifiers and I personally thought that was just silly. But after listening to it, I see why these reviews compared it with such high-end amplifiers. So exactly how good are these amplifiers? Are they really giant killers? Are they really able to compete with some of the highest performing amplifiers in high-end audio? Well, make sure to grab a cup of coffee or tea and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss anything because we are about to find out. So when I first heard about these Kinky Studio monoblocks, it was at the time when I worked at the high-end audio store in Canada, here. My friend working there bought a demo unit from the distributor and the store we worked at didn't even carry the brand due to the margin being too low. And that's the other thing. I know a lot of you guys have been complaining about not being able to hear the Kinky Studio stuff or the Denafrip stuff, etc. But that's because dealers are not going to carry it due to the low margin. Now that's unfortunate, but hey, on the bright side, it is being transferred to the customers without dealer markup. So just think of it this way. You are basically buying it for whatever the price the dealers would buy it for. So anyways, back to the story with my friend who bought the monoblocks. We unpacked it and hooked it up to the high-end system worth about $70,000 USD. That's the price without the amplifiers. Before we had it hooked up to the Macintosh MC462, which costs 9,000 USD. And one would think that the sound would become a lot inferior when switching to a component that costs less than half at 3,500 USD per pair. But no, the King Studio monoblocks had me and my friend keep repeating ourselves over and over again. We were like, wow, wow. This is great. The sound we heard was more neutral and less warm than the Macintosh MC462, but it was cleaner, faster, and sweeter sounding to my ears. So obviously, I went straight to work to get these in for a review. A few days passed and they arrived at my door and I was extremely confused at first because the monoblocks that my friend had and the one that arrived to review uh, look different, mainly this front display. So I contacted Kinky Studio and they told me that there was a recent upgrade. So I'm just going to put the upgrades up on the screen here. So obviously, bigger, massive toroidal transformers in each of them, which is absolutely ridiculous. These transformers are no joke. Of course, the size of the transformer is not everything in an amplifier design, but just to give you a reference, a single transformer in these monoblocks are bigger than the ones in Name Super Nate 3 or the Hegel H190, and you get two of them, one in each. You can bet that these have no problem delivering power even to the most demanding speakers that dip down to 2 ohms. And then of course, there's the other upgrades. So I was a bit worried because the manufacturing cost must have gone up and so I asked them if they increased the price from the original price. And their answer was no, they kept the price the same. Now this was interesting to me because I know that those upgrades were significant enough to increase the manufacturing costs. So I asked them how this was possible, like did they decrease the quality of the components or something? Their answer was that they decided to keep the price the same 
despite increased manufacturing cost and actually better component quality overall to keep them even more competitive. In terms of power, these output stable 250 watts from 2 to 8 ohms and 400 watts on instantaneous power output at 8 ohms for when there's a sudden high demand from the speakers when you play something demanding. The display in the front of the amplifier shows you the amplifier status, if it's in operation or standby. And by the way, I advise you to never turn this amplifier off. I have them on standby all the time. This reduces any type of warm up time for the optimal sound. The backside has both balanced and RCA inputs with high quality binding posts. Looks like Furtech to me. As for aesthetics, yes, they are basically a box, but they do look more impressive in person. And they do come in black as well if silver is not your thing. So finally, how do these sound? Well, I've had the pleasure of pairing these amplifiers to various different speakers from the Focals and Sonos Fabers that cost $17,000 a pair to Tecton lower speakers that cost $1,000 a pair. And to me, these sound neutral with a slight boost in the bottom end to add that muscularity to the sound. The bass is also very deep and clean sounding. It is not a wimpy sounding amplifier and it is seriously dynamic. The first thing you notice, in fact, is how dynamic these amplifiers sound even compared to some well-known amplifiers like Parasound, Name, and Hegel. It is able to genuinely let your speakers express those low, low notes, given that your speakers are capable of doing so. But one thing that separates this amplifier's low end from amplifiers like Parasound A21 Plus or Hegel H190 is that every time I hear the Kinky Studio monoblocks, the bass seems cleaner and rounder. One thing that I really liked about the bass in the Hegel H190 was that it had really good bass authority and control Perhaps not entirely, but partially due to the high damping factor of 4000. And I found the same quality here on the Kinky Studio monoblocks, except I found it more cleaner as if I heard more details in the bass. So I asked them for their damping factor spec and they gladly provide me with it. According to them, the damping factor on the B7 monoblocks are 2500. Now that is almost meaningless as damping factors just needs to be high enough and even 1000 is already considered pretty high. But it was good to know that their damping factor was high as that helps with preventing sloppy bass or slow bass. Uh, same thing applies with the mid bass. It is extremely punchy and quite fast, but again, cleaner and rounder than the Paris sound and the Hago amplifiers. I find these to have more muscularity and grip in the low, low frequency than the name Supernate 3. And comparable punch in the mid bass, but the Supernate 3 does seem more cleaner in the overall presentation in the bass region by a small margin. When it comes to the mid range, it is pretty smooth and neutral without much edge, um, the edge you would normally find in some sol solid state amplifiers. I would say slightly smoother than the Hegel H190 and the Paris Sound A21 Plus. Kinky Studio, in my opinion, sounds cleaner and more pinpoint with better imaging than either of those amplifiers. The name Supernate 3 does seem a bit more cleaner than the Kinky Studio monoblocks, but it is, it is slightly edgy and leaner sounding on some recordings in comparison. From my experience, when you hear instruments, you do not just hear notes, but you feel the instruments. For example, when you play a guitar and it is being struck or strummed, in my opinion, Kinky Studio monoblocks are able to deliver this quality, much like the same quality as the Halo H190 I love so much. It has really good tone and instrumental impact as well, that is rather felt with your body when you have capable speakers. The only difference is that I find the Kinky Studio monoblocks slightly more cleaner in the mid-range and better with vocals than the Hegel H190. Every time I hear the vocals on the Kinky Studio monoblocks compared to other amplifiers I have mentioned, I hear detail and layering that was not present before. Of course, this is subtle and something you have to keep them around and AB them multiple times to wrap your head around because at the first, the name Supernate 3 seems cleaner and more detailed. 
because the Kinky Studio monoblocks are smoother sounding with less edge. But as I heard more, I found that the Kinky Studio monoblocks were able to pick up nuances within the music with better clarity and layering. This is also not a very rolled off or boring sounding amplifier. These have life to them on the top end. I wouldn't say they are forward or aggressive in any way. I actually find them quite smooth in the mid range and the top end without that edginess that you find in some solid state amplifiers. Some people find the Halo H190 to have a slightly too polite high frequency and you find it less airy or spacious sounding on the top end. The Kinky Studio monoblocks, on the other hand, have plenty of spaciousness and airy feeling to it. I would say it is somewhere between the Halo H190 and the Super Nate 3 in terms of its overall brightness. But again, it is never sharp or harsh to my ears, and this spacious feeling really ties well with the sound staging because I find the Kinky Studio monoblocks to throw the largest sound stage and a more accurate imaging and separation within that sound stage than the Hegel H190 or name, which I find to be more intimate sounding amplifiers in comparison. Overall, I find the Kinky Studio monoblocks to be excellent from top to bottom. I find, I find it extremely musical and engaging, but the important word there is engaging. It is totally opposite from the tube amplifiers or the first watt F7 in its musicality. While solid state amplifiers like the first watt F7 I reviewed or tube amplifiers have warmth and a fullness to the sound that can be attributed to things sounding more musical, the Kinky Studio monoblocks sound more engaging. And it lets you hear the speakers and elements within the music without the classic fatigue of certain solid state amplifiers. In my opinion, it is less colored as if the curtains have been lifted or a fog have been removed from the window. So overall, it's not a laid back presentation. It is more engaging and it's something that draws your attention when you're listening to music. They also sent in the P7 preamplifier, which is the matching preamplifier for the Kinky Studio monoblocks. And this preamplifier will be getting its own review in the future because it deserves its own spotlight but I will say that pairing it with the Kinky Studio monoblocks, it is a no brainer. It makes the amplifier sounds tighter and punch harder in the bass and better refinement in the top band frequencies, even compared to some of the more expensive preamplifiers from name or pair sound that I have tried. So do I think these are giant killers? I believe they can be in certain ways and here's why. And I need you guys to hear me out very carefully. When I hear these amplifiers, it keeps on reminding me of the sound that I got from the Dan D'Agostino M400 amplifiers that cost 65,000 USD. Now, I will not say that the B7 monoblocks here are as good or better, but I will say that they have very similar characteristics in the sound signature in how dynamic and neutral they are. And for a fraction of the price of the M400, it was impressive how these MB7 monoblocks reminded me a lot of the M400. And please understand me correctly. Like I said, these definitely compete very well and perhaps even better than some $10,000 amplifiers. You can even call it the poor man's Dan D'Agostino or even the no frills version, but it is not going to be a giant killer in the $20,000 region or so. In fact, the only reason this one doesn't win the best award is because these amplifiers are 3,500 USD per pair and for something to win the best award, it needs to be easily performing and comparable to something that's five times the price, which is 3,500 times five is 17,500. And in my mind, although these model blocks punch way above its price point, I do not think these are quite there yet to compete with $20,000 amplifiers, but neither was the Hegel amplifiers I love so much, which also didn't win the best award. Hey, who made these rules? You did. Anyways, point aside, these monoblocks at this price is just absolutely insane. And hopefully it will cause the industry to be more competitive in this price category. 
I will even go far as to say that I personally like it better than the Hegel H190. And with the addition of the Kinky Studio P7 preamplifier, I like it even better than the Hegel H390. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Make sure to click that like button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification so you don't miss anything. And I will see you on the next one.